Olympic gold medal shattered when he was disqualified in the most controversial bout at Los Angeles. But since he turned pro in 1984, he has pursued a second dream, a professional world championship. He has won eight straight bouts, including this one, December 21st, against world-rated Anthony Davis, whom Holyfield stopped impressively on a fourth-round TKO. Today, Evander Holyfield is just one fight away from becoming the first member of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team to fight for a world title if he beats Shasanda Muti, the British Commonwealth cruiserweight champion, who himself fought for a world title last October against unbeaten Leroy Murphy, the IBF cruiserweight champion. Muti built up a big early lead, but tired and was stopped in the 12th round. Today, live on ABC's Wide World of Sports, unbeaten Evander Holyfield against Shasanda Moody in a 10-round cruiserweight battle. And Shasanda Moody, in training for defense of his British Commonwealth crown, he was training in West Germany. The two were paired. They're both ranked in the top 10 right now, and it should be a, a pretty interesting test for one Evander Holyfield, who comes in right now with a chance for a title shot. Now on uh, the 23rd of March, it will be Dwight Muhammad Kwawi taking on Leon Spinks for the WBA Junior Heavyweight Championship, which is roughly the equivalent of the WBC Cruiserweight Division. The winner of that fight will meet Holyfield, assuming Holyfield gets by this one. Now, Evander Holyfield went into the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, certainly not the most heralded of the Olympians, but he probably came out with the most notoriety as we look at his recent history. Holyfield looked like he was on his way to... Well, I would give myself a more like a B, like that, because I don't think I could ever um, become an A to our finish. You know, when, when I retired, then I can look back and say, yeah, I was an A. But, you know, long, as long as I'm in this boxing thing, I got to keep myself on the level of B. And that means I got to get better each fight. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by our new boxing analyst, Alex Wallow, who made his debut a couple of weeks ago. And Alex, uh, not only have you followed professional boxing, but amateur boxing through the years, you've watched Holyfield since early on in his amateur career. He now has a chance to become the first of the Olympians to fight for a world title. Is he ready this fast? Well, Al, uh, boxing old-timers would be horrified to hear of a fighter fighting for a world title in his 10th professional fight. But Evander Holyfield, in my opinion, is ready for two reasons. One, his own ability. He has been very impressive in his eight fights to date. He has shown that he has retained uh, his power. He puts punches together very, very well. And he has the competitive fire to take on an opponent in, when he's in trouble and to take him out. The other reason I think he's ready is because the cruiserweight division itself 
is very, very weak. And at this point, after only eight professional fights, I think Evander Holyfield is ready to take on anyone in that division. Well, Shasan the Moody, the man he's taking on, almost held the crown. And it's only because of very bizarre circumstances that he is not the champion right now. There are very few circumstances more bizarre than uh, than when Shasan Moody fought Leroy Murphy for the cruiserweight title last October. This is action from round 12. Watch the right hands of both fighters. Right there. They both landed simultaneous right hands and they both go down to the canvas. This has the potential to be a double knockout. Referee Larry Hazard comes in and he is counting for both fighters. The fighter that gets up and beats the count will be champion. Here he's counting. Murphy gets up. Hazard moves to count for Chisanda Moody. And Murphy was the champion. Moody lost his title shot. He's back here looking to uh, get that title shot back by beating Evander Holyfield today. Holyfield, 23 years old. Moody, 28. The weight disparity there, Holyfield, 184 and a half. Moody, 192. And a two and a half inch reach advantage for Holyfield. Alex, how do you see this fight going? Well, I think, Al, that uh, Holyfield is just uh, too strong and too quick for Moody. Uh, I would expect him to put pressure on from the opening bell, try to relax, try to pace himself. His trainer, Lou Duva, and uh, George Benton, the other co-trainer, have been trying to work to get Evander's defense better. He is easy to hit. Sometimes he concentrates so much on his offense that he forgets to move his head. So I think the thing to watch for in this fight is, uh, it, has Evander improved his defensive ability uh, enough to be able to challenge for a world title? A loud and a boisterous and obviously a partisan crowd. I think you could hear the strains of Born in the USA as the backdrop for our scene set, as has been the case with all of the Olympians. So many fans have followed their professional careers. They've been greeted warmly, toasted wherever they've been, and here we go. As Evander Holyfield tries to stay unbeaten, tries to increase his record to nine victories and no defeats against Moody, who is a reported 28 and five, with two draws. Holyfield has shown exceptional boxing skills, good improvement, good power, stamina. He's proven he can go the distance. We saw him go eight rounds in July against Tyrone Booz. This one is scheduled for 10. One of the problems we had coming in, uh, Evander had coming into his professional career, Al, were some doubts about his ability to go around. Uh, his trainers, put him through uh, early in his career, professional career, uh, an eight round training session with two and a half minute rounds to give him, without telling him, to give him the feeling that he could in fact go eight three minute rounds. And uh, that got him over the hump. He has shown, as you said, uh, thus far the ability uh, to go uh, eight rounds and uh, if necessary to go 10 or more. He's not starting out as quickly as he has in the past. And uh, part of that of being dictated right now by Moody more of a feeling out process than we have seen in the first rounds of other holy field fights in his brief pro career. Halfway through round one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Holyfield trying to hit, get inside with that combination. But Moody effectively blocking most everything Holyfield has thrown at this point in round one, but he did land that right hand. That right uppercut that uh, Evander landed a few seconds ago, Al, would be a good weapon for him to try again. Uh, Moody is open right up the middle. And a left followed by a right hand as he has Moody backing up. Round one. Scheduled for 10. See Holyfield trying, trying that jab. Duva and Benton, his trainers, want him to work behind the jab. He's gotten a little bit KO conscious, and he's forgotten the jab, which was a very powerful weapon for him as an amateur. They want him to get the range with the jab and then let his combinations go. Yeah. Yeah. And he follows a couple of jabs with a good right hand and another right hand. Another right scoring here in the waning seconds of round one. Under 10 seconds to go in the first of the scheduled 10 rounder. An impressive finish for round one for Evander Holyfield. 
Pennsylvania. Five-point must. Standing eight count at the referee's discretion. Doctor can stop the fight at any time. And the three knockdown rule is in effect. Three times down in the round and you're finished. Holyfield, who had a good spurt early in round one and finished strong in round one. In the second round now against Shasanda Muti, originally from Zambia, now fighting out of Dusseldorf, West Germany. And tomorrow, more action from this same ring on our Pro Boxing Series at 3 Eastern time. Mark Breland will attempt to stay unbeaten as he will be in action, taking on Richard Aguirre. Holyfield taking his time. He's really waiting for Moody to punch, trying to create some opportunities for himself. He might try to move side to side to create his own angles to land punches. Put the right hand into the body. So right there, Holyfield is too close to the opponent. He needs to step back, get his range, and then let his combinations go. He let the left hand go and tries to work inside with that right uppercut. And lands a decent right there as well. If he's vulnerable in any one area, Alex, have you noticed any one area in which uh, Moody might have a chance to win this fight? Well, if I were a, an opponent or a trainer for a fighter who's going to go going to with Holyfield, you'd have to find a way to stay away from his power. Uh, and the best way to do that is to jab, keep him out uh, outside, keep him out of his punching range, and move. Just don't let him set himself. Try to back him up, try to move, set, move, set. But uh, Moody, while he's, he's durable, you can see that he doesn't move that much. He stands there, and you can't stand in front of Evander Holyfield and expect to win. Not for very long. Second round action. Final half minute of round two. Vander Holyfield, 8-0 as a professional with five knockouts. The bronze medalist in the light heavyweight division at the 1984 Olympics under most unusual circumstances. But a man who has made solid and steady progress as a pro and hopeful of gaining a title shot. End of the second round at hand. Evander Holyfield in the white trunks against Shasanda Moody in the black trunks in a 10-round cruiserweight confrontation. Moody, the British Commonwealth cruiserweight champion, and Holyfield, who is now ranked 10th by the WBC in this division and 8th by the IBF, a little more than a year into his pro career. And again, Evander Holyfield with a title shot imminent if he wins this one. Then later this month, Dwight Muhammad Kwawi meets Leon Spinks for the WBA Junior Heavyweight Championship, roughly the equivalent of this division in the WBC. And the winner of that fight would meet Holyfield for the title, probably in uh, June or July. Holyfield tries to come in with a right back of the left and does. A couple of left hooks, another right hand. And Moody in danger. Moody absorbing another right hand. Moody backing up. Holyfield still stalking him. Moody for the moment weathering that brief storm, but another good right hand got in between the leather. You see the durability here of Moody. He's not the kind of fighter traditionally who has been able to be knocked out with one punch. You have to put punches together like Holyfield has done right there, and this fight is over. It should be. That's the eighth. Knocked down here in round three, and the referee signaling an end without even beginning the count. Tony Wolf, knowing that Moody was in desperate trouble, he was hung up against the ropes. And that enabled Holyfield to get in a couple of extra punches, and that spelled the end for Shasanda Moody in this scheduled 10 rounder. So Moody comes across the ocean to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to accept 
this confrontation with Holyfield and winds up flat on his back as Evander takes a step toward a title shot with an impressive third round knockout victory over Shisanda Moody. Evander Holyfield now with a mark of 9 and 0, oh, 6 knockouts. We want to alert our local stations. We will be taking a station break for you momentarily. Moody has gotten up. They have put him on the stool. And we'll take a look at the replay of the knockout. Third round. An accumulation of punches, really. The right hand there was the one that did uh, the final damage that put Moody over the ropes. Referee moves in there. Maybe a punch late. Takes Holyfield away. And as you said, Al, doesn't even bother to count. Fight's over. So Holyfield is the winner. And we'll be back with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports right after this word from your local station. So how did you feel then coming out for round three? Did you anticipate the end at hand? Well, I, I didn't think it was going to end, but uh, I started hitting the guy with the body shot early, early in that round, and he started uh, dropping his guards, and that's when I waited to get a left hook and the right hand by him. Well, take a look at this knockout right now, and let's talk about also the title shot that's coming up for you. Do you feel ready for it? Well, I'm, I'm more than ready for it. Uh, I got my mind together. I got my belief. You know, I accept the Lord Jesus in my life, and... Uh, and so that's, that's the strength of my life, accepting the Lord Jesus. This was the end of the fight, which came right here. And a uh, little doubt in your mind, I'm sure the referee made the right decision and not even uh, beginning the count there. Yes, he, he made the right decision because the guy, he really was out. He was halfway out on the rope, but I, I wanted to make sure he wasn't going to get back up and start protecting himself. So I hit him with a couple more shots uh, to finish him off. Generally, are you pretty happy? Have things gone as you had planned and had hoped at the beginning of your professional career? The thing, uh, thing is that thing is progressing a lot faster than I thought it would. But uh, with the competition and, uh, and the way I came along, uh, it's jam up. Now, obviously, you will watch with great interest when Kwawi meets Spink. So would one man be better suited for you than the other? Well, I, I think, um, really, I think uh, Spinks would be better for my side because Kwawi he bobs a lot, and which uh, that's a little problem I'm working on, uh, working with shorter guys that uh, bob a lot. Okay, we congratulate you, Evander. And right now, we're going to take a look at World Cup Boxing, which was taped earlier in Seoul, Korea. Al Troutwig was there, along with Alex Wallow.